This is the church of Santa Maria Maggiore, built in the mid-5th century as a testimony to Mary, the mother of Jesus. One of the most beautiful churches in Rome. We can hear those bells beckoning us to come inside and see. This church is on the summit of the Esquiline Hill, a short distance from the Lateran Basilica. It's called St. Mary Major because it's the largest church in Rome honoring Mary, the mother of Jesus. It was built in the early fifth century as the barbarian invasions began. In 410, the Goths sacked Rome, a city everyone thought invincible. The English historian Edward Gibbon called this century Rome's time of decline and fall. Hardly a good time to build a church, maybe a bigger army or bigger city walls, but in Rome they were building churches. And St. Mary Major was the largest of them. The Romans who followed the traditional religion claimed that Christians caused the bad times by abandoning Rome's traditional gods. They also accused them of not supporting the army. St. Augustine replied by writing his great treatise, The City of God. Christians didn't cause Rome's fall, the saint said. Two loves are at work in the world, building two cities. One love builds an evil city. Christians must build the city of God, built of love and justice. Churches are signs of the city of God, where God's love is taught, where renewal takes place, where the mysteries of faith are celebrated and the heroes of faith are recalled. They're places of beauty, ever ancient, ever new. Mary is a leading figure in this church, as the great 13th century mosaic makes clear. Jesus Christ, her son, crowns her as heaven's queen, sharing his throne with her. She's God's lowly servant, and God triumphs in her. She's also a sign that God will triumph in the church as well. Mary is a leading figure in the sacred stories pictured in this church. She's joined by a noticeable number of women from the Old and New Testaments who, like her, seem powerless but are empowered by God. The stories from the Old Testament the oldest in the church, are stories of salvation. God saves his people from their enemies. God reaches out to all people to save them. The Borghese Chapel at the left of the church holds perhaps the earliest icon of Mary in Rome. Mary, his mother and closest disciple, shows us her son, who is our teacher and Lord. She's his disciple, marked with his cross. In his hands is the Book of Life. This church, to use a phrase of Pope John Paul II, is a school of Mary, who teaches the mysteries she's learned. From birth to death, she accepted God's will, be it done to me according to your word. It shouldn't surprise us that Events featuring Mary were first celebrated here. 
The Christmas feast on December the 25th developed here in the 5th century and then spread to other churches of the West. Roman Christians had close connections then with Bethlehem in the Holy Land through Paula, her daughter Eustochium and Jerome, the Christian writer and Bible translator. All of these had close ties to Rome and they established monastic communities next to the cave in Bethlehem where Jesus was born. After the Muslim conquest of the Holy Land in the seventh century, Christian refugees from Bethlehem brought relics purported to be the crib of the Christ child back to this church. An early name of this church was St. Mary of the Crib. This was now Bethlehem in Rome. Those relics rest beneath the church's main altar. Besides the Christmas liturgy, other feasts of Mary, her Immaculate Conception and Assumption, developed in this church. They all follow and support her role in the life of Jesus, her Son and her Savior. Built on a hill where all could see it, near Rome's eastern walls, so often threatened by barbarian armies, St. Mary Major affirms Christianity's ultimate answer to its enemies. It's not military might, but the power of faith and love that's strong. Over time, however hard and dark it seems, the city of God triumphs in the end.